So today I'm going to start uh, preparing for the installation of my Raymarine AIS 700 module on uh, on our vessel. So we have a uh, 2018 Jeannot 349 Sun Odyssey. Uh, we purchased it new in 2018. Came outfitted with the manufacturer's uh, cruising electronic package, which uh, consisted of Raymarine instrument uh, module and navigation module I-70, E-70, along with a, a Raymarine VHF radio, uh, I think it's a 53, and um, no AIS, no GPS on the, uh, on the as installed system from the manufacturer. So we're gonna try and correct that a little bit. Um, we have a cruise that we're taking across the lake next week. Uh, we're gonna leave Chicago, head up to Grand Haven, it's about 90 nautical miles, then south to South Haven, Michigan, then back across. Um, good voyage, this will be our third time crossing the lake. Uh, the first time we ended up purchasing a radar reflector because we don't have radar on the vessel either. Um, but it's, it's time to get a little, a little more advanced in our technology. So we thought AIS was a good way to go, at least to get started. There's a lot of extra benefits, uh, to installing the module with our current configuration. Uh, the VHF radio will have G GPS coordinates, uh, the ability to get GPS coordinates now and our, um, Raymarine I-70 multifunction display unit, uh, has AIS capabilities and can display targets. So we don't need to buy an extra MFD or anything like that. So I've got uh, everything I need and uh, we'll move on to the next clip and go from there. Okay, so this is uh, what came in the box for the Raymarine AIS 700 uh, instruction manual. I've also downloaded this uh, from their website. This is the AIS module itself. It's a receiver and transmitter as well as a splitter. So I should be able to attach the VHF antenna that's going into the radio to this and then run a new connector to the VHF. Comes with a GPS antenna. Talk about some proposed locations for that here in a second. This is the power wire, uh, which is something I'm very interested in. Haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to land the power for this device yet. I'd like to wire it to one of our existing breakers on our uh, distribution panel, but we'll see. Uh, then there's a C-talk cable and a, uh, this is the connector cable for the VHF antenna. Uh, we have the Raymarine backbone system, the C-talk system, so um, that makes life a lot easier. Uh, other things that I have for the install, I've got a digital multimeter. This is the first electrical project that I've taken on on the boat. I've got uh, some wire strippers and crimpers. I have some shrink wrap, heat shrink uh, connectors that I'm going to use. Uh, I purchased a waterproof inline fuse holder um, in case I can't run it to a breaker with a fuse on it. Um, they recommend that you f put a fuse on the on the on the red power wire, and then it's a three amp fuse. So that's what we have, and we'll go from there. So this is our nav station on the Sun Odyssey three four nine. Um, this is our Raymarine VHF radio, um, which actually has the capabilities to uh, display GPS information. But as you can see right there, it says no position data. Theoretically, when I connect the GPS antenna that I received with the AIS 700 device uh, to the Raymarine SeaTalk system, uh, this should pick up GPS data, which will be great. We already have an MMSI number, so when we launch a distress call, our display, our, our GPS location will be displayed. Uh, that's also the case with the I-70 instrument. I'll show you that in a second up at the helm. Um, it'll have GPS data as well. So this is our breaker panel. It's AC-DC panel. Um, I'd like to land it right there on that one, the navigation breaker seen on some owners forums that you can do that but uh i'm not sure so we shall see 
I'll show you the insides, the guts here in a second. Okay, so I'm at the helm. Wanted to show everyone the uh, instruments that we have. It's the I-70 and the P-70. One's the instrument display, the other one's the autopilot module or unit. Um, this is one that's really gonna benefit from the installation of the AIS. Normally, as you can see, we just have it set for standard stuff. But uh, if we go to data, you can see here that we can select the AIS. So we're all ready to integrate the AIS, display the targets as well as heading information. Uh, if we go back and we look at uh, some other data options, we'll have GPS here as well. So we'll be able to add some GPS information, speed over grade, anyway. So we're pretty excited about that as well. So the other thing that I've been trying to think through is the location of the GPS antenna. Um, there's some posts online where people or manufacturers have mounted the GPS antenna inside the hull. It just doesn't seem right. Um, counterintuitive. Just feel like it needs a, a clean shot at the sky. But um, so let me show you a couple locations I'm considering. So our 349 has twin helms and um, I've been thinking that this flat surface behind the port helm on the transom rail would be a good spot. It's on the same side. The, the nav station is on the port side as well. So um, I'm gonna go below and take a look at what it'll take to run the antenna wire uh, from this location to the uh, to the nav station. 